Today, grade eight, uh, we are doing an investigation on the particle model of matter. So the particle model of matter, first, you must understand that there are three assumptions of the particle model of matter. The first one is that all matter is made up of particles. The second one is that all of those particles are in motion all of the time. And that is the assumption that we are dealing with today. And the third assumption is that all of those particles, when they collide with each other or with the walls of the container, that they don't lose any momentum or there's no energy lost with those collisions. So today we're going to be looking at various temperatures of water. I've actually finished the experiment and, and I'm filming this afterwards. But we're looking at different temperatures of water and therefore different energies and how that affects when we drop food coloring into the water. And the, when that food coloring mixes into the water, it's an indication of how much energy or how much movement there is in the water as a result of having different temperatures. That energy, that movement energy, we refer to as kinetic energy. Okay, That's the word that we use in science for movement is kinetic. And it's a form of energy, so therefore kinetic energy. And we'll just have a quick look at how much kinetic energy there is in these three different containers and how that affects how the color mixes in with the water. Okay, so let's move on to the investigation now and looking at what happened. We've got a picture of our apparatus. Um, that's everything that I had at home. I did my best to control everything, but obviously didn't have everything I would have had in the lab. So not everything is controlled, but for the two extremes of temperature, I did use two identical sized mugs, those two that I've got labeled there. Um, then I used 350 milliliters of water in all of the containers, so that we had equal uh, measures of volume. And for the freshly boiled water and the almost frozen water, I tried to get the temperature as close to 100 degrees and as close to 0 degrees as I could by using it as soon after I had taken it out of the freezer and out of the kettle as possible. And just to mention with water, because we are measuring liquids, we need to m measure volumetrically. So that's milliliters, liters, kiloliters, etc. So now we move on to the start of the experiment. And what we need to do is watch and compare what happens. So notice with the two experimental containers, I dropped the food coloring in at the same time. And now what you needed to do is observe what is happening in each container and try and identify the differences and then see if you can figure out what the reason for the differences are. So basically what's happening is explained by the second assumption of the particle model of matter, that being that all particles are constantly in motion. Remember that kinetic energy is actually what we are measuring when we measure temperature. So kinetic energy is temperature. And there is more heat energy in the hot container than in any of the other containers. And the cold one has the least amount of kinetic energy. Now, kinetic energy means movement. So those particles in constant motion, the hot particles are moving around more and the cold ones are moving around the least and that movement of those particles is what is mixing the colorant into the water and giving us those differences. So because there's more energy in the hot container and the least amount of energy with the cold container, that is why the difference uh, that we can see that's happening now. And it is the movement of the particles that is mixing the food color into the water and spreading the colorant around. So shortly some pictures will come up of uh, the various mugs at various time intervals. The first series is at five minutes. So after five minutes there's our room temperature mug. You can see not completely mixed. Still got streaks in it. The hot water is completely mixed. Very difficult to discern any difference in color. And the cold water, very little mixing has occurred, even after five minutes. Then when we look from above, you can see there's a really clear difference there. And this is after 20 minutes. So the cold water is still not mixed after 20 minutes. 
So high temperature means high kinetic energy, therefore lots of movement, and therefore that movement mixes the food colorant in. Low temperature means low kinetic energy, means low movement of particles, and therefore not much mixing involved. So now we are just going to move on and uh, talk about why you had an inquiry-based investigation while we just watch another demonstration. An inquiry-based investigation is where you are given some very loose instructions and you aren't told what answer you are looking for and you are left to learn and discover and research on your own and in your own way and therefore uh, the outcomes tend to be a lot better in terms of better retention. So that is why I chose this as the method. If any of you guys did uh, in your own research come up with that second assumption that all particles are in constant motion all of the time, then well done to you. That is what I was hoping uh, you would get to. So that is why we chose to do an inquiry-based investigation, a much better form of learning. But what I need to do for you guys is we need to talk about your practical investigation write-up. So, as I said, those uh, very vague instructions that I gave you, uh, and then I asked you to write up your investigation according to the steps of the scientific method that we had covered early in the year. So, you should have started with your aim and your research question, which should have been worded around the fact that you are looking to investigate the, what will happen um, between the different containers with different temperature of water when food colorant, or you could have also used juice, is dropped into the container. So any, any uh, quest, research question or aim worded around that. Then your background information might have varied quite a bit, but what we were looking for is those assumptions of the particle model of matter, and you should have specifically spoken about the fact that particles are in motion all of the time, and if you did refer to kinetic energy being movement energy and the fact that the hot container had the most amount of energy then that would have got you really good credit okay but again it's it is an inquiry based investigation so not too strict on that one then we move on to your method so first we need to talk about variables so your independent variable, remember that is what I change in the experiment. So the thing that I changed is the temperature. So your independent variable is temperature of the water. And your dependent variable is the degree or the speed to, uh, uh, with which the uh, food colorant spread throughout the water. So that takes care of those two variables. Then as far as possible, you need to control everything else and use equipment that is as similar as possible. So as I mentioned before, I tr with the two extremes of temperature, I used identical containers. But we did have one thing that we could not control. So I'll speak about that a little bit later as a confounding variable. But when you do things like this, what you need to show is that you made an effort to control all the other var variables so that you are only testing one thing so that you can measure the outcome of that one thing your independent variable and that is the only change that you are trying to allow to influence the results of your investigation so the things that i did to attempt to control everything was that all the equipment was washed in the same way i used the same source of tap water i tried as far as possible to use containers that were similar and there were two that were identical I used the same volume of water that was 350 milliliters and I used the same colorant in all of the containers and obviously all of the uh, experiments were done at the same time because particularly when we are dealing with the particle model of matter things like temperature and atmospheric pressure and humidity can affect uh, the experiment so by doing all of the experiments at the same time we expose them to all of the same factors so that they do not influence the results in any way. Then moving on to your results, remember that results should always, where possible, be presented in the forms of tables and graphs. Now this uh, study was a little bit difficult uh, because there was no objective measurement. 
we didn't have any tools to do that and in a study like this it would be very difficult to achieve that so all of our measurements are subjective so that's not ideal uh, but what we should attempt to do is come up with a way that is consistent and repeatable um, and for this type of an investigation that would be perfectly acceptable and you would therefore need to be able to describe what is happening accurately and those subjective measurements um, would suffice and what you should have done is come up with a scaled way of measuring the degree of spread and use that scale and then try to put that in the form of a table it would have been very difficult to represent these results in the form of a graph and then obviously you need lots of discussion to describe what is happening uh, to give detail as with regard to that scale then moving on to your discussion that is where you should try and discuss the reasons for what you saw so in this case you should reflect back on that second assumption of the particle model of matter uh, and describe what you saw happening in that way and ascribe everything in terms of movement related to kinetic energy because all particles are moving at all times and the hot water containing more kinetic energy and therefore more movement and therefore spreading the dye quicker so that is what you should have done however if you did not see what you expected to happen then you needed to try and explain that so here in picture I've got the let's focus particularly on the room temperature and the hot water the different shape containers so because of the different shape of the containers it looks like we've got the same shade of red in the room temperature and the hot water however if we look from above we can see that there was in fact a difference and that is what we call a confounding variable so because we couldn't control all of those factors we had a confounding variable that could have led us astray and you are free to draw your own conclusions um, you could have refuted your or, or answered your research question negatively or refuted your hypothesis if you did have a hypothesis um, as long as you can back it up that is up to you as long as you can provide adequate reasons for what you are saying you are perfectly entitled and that is the reason why it is very important to control all your variables as far as possible and to have only one independent variable that is different uh, that way you can be sure that you are measuring the influence of one factor in your investigation so your discussion comments on your observation and you try and you find reasons for what you saw you largely should be reflecting back on your background knowledge which is the second section that you should have written in your write-up uh, and try and find reasons for your observations uh, hopefully which would have appeared in that background knowledge section and that should lead you very neatly to your conclusion which should be very short and it should be very obvious what you need to write there that is where you either need to agree or confirm your hypothesis uh, or answer your research question so it should be very short you should have done all your writing already in your discussion and you should either either be confirming or refuting your hypothesis or answering your research question in that section and then to finish off you should have a short bibliography or a reference list so that wraps up your write-up and uh, you can see how the scientific method can be included with any section right so in this case we've used the particle model of matter as a way of uh, exploring your knowledge on both subjects and that generally is how the scientific method will be uh, tested and evaluated going forward uh, so we've done a complete summary of that section of work that we completed earlier in the year now in the background uh, you'll see lots of pretty colors of dye and what I was hoping that you would observe there is uh, we had two containers with hot water in and three containers with cold water so I'll leave it to you to figure out which ones were hot and which ones were cold um, it's pretty obvious so I'll leave that up with the one up to you guys to figure out I wasn't just making pretty colors and having fun with my own kids uh, it was done uh, for your benefit as well so I hope you had fun doing that at home um, not too sure yet when we will all be back at school looks like it is going to be quite a while 
but uh, I do look forward to seeing you all at school again sometime soon and I hope that you are all working hard at home and I hope that you enjoyed doing it this way and I hope that you learnt a lot. I know my kids certainly had a lot of fun, they helped me do it and uh, it was actually my son's idea to try and mix the colours and do what you are seeing in front of you now. Now you'll see what happens when we add a little bit of uh, kinetic energy to the containers that need it. We can complete the mixing by what, what I'm doing there is I'm adding movement. So that's adding kinetic energy and we completely mix the containers and that should tell you which two containers were the cold ones. So now just to puzzle your brains a little bit more, I've got another experiment to show you. Uh, there are my apparatus. So we've got a chutney bottle, a boiled egg, and three candles. Um, my son asked me if we could do any more experiment, experiments, so I showed him another one that has to do with the particle model of matter, and you can figure out what's going on here. So all I did was stick some candles into the boiled egg, gently put the bottle over the top, and there we go. So you guys can figure out how the particle model of matter is involved there. You can see it's just a normal bottle. I haven't done anything to it. And the egg is now inside the bottle. So why did that happen?